Hello, in this video demonstration I want to show you how to create and register a simple c -sharp and VB.NET add-in for SOLIDWORKS in three steps. Step 1. Implement RSW add-in interface. Let's create a sample project. You need to select the class library template as a project type. I'm adding the references to SOLIDWORKS libraries. Please note that the latest versions of SOLIDWORKS are using latest version of .NET framework, but they still support older versions. SOLIDWORKS now provides two sets of interop libraries. One for framework versions earlier than 3.5 and other one for versions newer than 3.5. In our demonstration I will be using framework 3.5 and will be adding the libraries from Redis CLR2 folder. Otherwise, you need to add the libraries from Redis folder. SOLIDWORKS add-in is a COM DLL which implements the ISW add-in interface from SOLIDWORKS.interop.sw published namespace. ISW add-in interface exposes two functions. Connect to SW. This function is invoked when the add-in is loaded either with the start of SOLIDWORKS or by enabling the add-in in tools add-ins menu in SOLIDWORKS. You need to put all the initialization routine to this function, such as creating of user interface elements, connecting to databases, etc. Disconnect from SW function invoked when SOLIDWORKS is shutting down or add-in is unloaded from tools add-ins menu. Free your resources in this function. I will add a sample message box to be shown when the add-in is loaded. Step 2. Adding com attributes to an add-in DLL and linking to SOLIDWORKS. Now we need to tell SOLIDWORKS to load our custom add-in. And when SOLIDWORKS is loading, it is searching for an add-in in the HK local machine software SOLIDWORKS add-ins registry branch for all registered add-ins. As you see, registry key is a GUID of an add-in with the description and the title keys. GUID is a global unique identifier which is produced to identify a particular component, file, application, database entry, etc. In our case, GUID is used to identify the COM add-in component. I'm going to assign GUID to my class using the GUID attribute class. I will be using the GUID generator tool in Visual Studio. I'm also adding the COM visible attribute to mark the class to be visible to COM. Let's add the required registry keys to make the add-in visible to SOLIDWORKS. There are a couple of tips. If you want your add-in to be visible to all SOLIDWORKS version installed on the target machine, you need to add the registry key to a general SOLIDWORKS registry branch. If you add your entry to a specific branch, add-in will only be loaded in this version. It is very handy if you have different versions of your add-in compatible with different versions of SOLIDWORKS. You can also control the load on startup toggle by adding the corresponding key with default value equals to 1 to add in startup registry branch of ashkey current user. I'm adding the subkey under the add-ins registry. The subkey name should be the add-ins grid enclosed in brackets. Two custom attributes, title and description, indicates how the add-in is shown under the tools add-ins dialog in SOLIDWORKS.
Let's start SolidWorks and see how it goes. You can see that the add-in is now in the list of add-ins, but it cannot be loaded and it points to a wrong DLL location. Step 3. Registering the add-in with Regasm utility. To make our class properly registered for COM in the .NET environment, we need to register it for COM interops. Generate TLB file. TLB stands for type library. I want to create a simple bat script which will register my add-in and add all required entries to the registry. In this command line script I will call the standard regasm utility. Please note that you need to call the utility which corresponds to the framework version of your add-in. If your framework is targeting to 2.0 or 3.5, you need to use regasm version 2, otherwise use regasm version 4. I need to use TLB switch to generate TLB file. Now we can see that the TLB file is generated in the bin directory. This file contains the com compatible representation for all comvisible.net types in my DLL. In simpler words, now com can understand and use my.net types. We're almost done. I want to show you the current state in SOLIDWORKS. Saying in advance, the add-in is not yet fully registered. You can see that the add-in is in the add-ins list. But if I hover the mouse over the SOLIDWORKS icon, it doesn't show the correct path. Let's find the registry entry in the classes registry branch. As you can see, there is no key which points to the library location. SOLIDWORKS is not loading add-ins from the GAC, stands for Global Assembly Cache. Instead, it tries to find the path to DLL using its codebase. I need to register the full path to my DLL. For this purpose, I will be using codebase key. Now, if I refresh my registry, it is clear that the COM class registration entry points to the correct DLL location. If I start SOLIDWORKS, my sample message box is shown and the add-in is created. Note that this command line script can be used when deploying your add-in to another workstation. Your users will need to run the script to make a proper registration. They need to run the script with administrator rights. If you add a registry script in addition to a command line script, this can be considered as a simple installer for your add-in. If you are a beginner, I would suggest using add-in templates provided by SOLIDWORKS in SOLIDWORKS SDK to create a sample add-ins. The templates already contain some predefined functionality. I will run through this in my next video. Thank you for watching this video.